Hey everybody, what's going on? Helmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. Today I wanted to talk about how you can win a game of League of Legends, because it's not as easy as a lot of people seem to think it is, which is just, well, we kinda got ahead in lanes, so I guess that means just keep pushing down the lane, or let's just group up and try to end the, the game, and it doesn't always work like that, and I think it's not a good idea to play without an eye towards your win conditions, or how you're going to find success in this game. I think a lot of times people just kind of assume that, well, I got ahead, so that means we're gonna win, right? And then the game kind of stalls out and people make mistakes and you eventually end up losing the game because you weren't playing for a specific win condition, you weren't leveraging the advantages you had, instead you just kind of hung around and gave the enemy team time to scale and made bad decisions and then all of a sudden it's a game again and you're sort of scrambling to try and come back but at this point it's anyone's game because it's 40 minutes in. So today I wanted to kind of talk about how to play to a win condition and how kind of tips and tricks to actually closing out games of League of Legends. So, first, it's not enough to just pick good champions and hope you do better in lane. I don't think that's a strategy you should have. Obviously, you should be playing champions that are strong. If someone is incredibly busted, like Swain may or may not be right now, sure, play the Swain, if you know how to play the Swain. Don't just pick him because you think he's busted. But if, you, if, you, if he's strong and he's open and you play him, pick him. That's, that'll help you. But at the same time... It's not enough to just play the champion and say, well, they're strong enough that we're just going to win the game now, right? That's not, unfortunately, how it works. Pretty much every champion in the game has something that players can do about them or against them, even in the draft, to mitigate their effectiveness. So it's not enough that you played Swain. You also need to be able to translate that into a victory somehow. So basically consider instead what kind of team composition you're running and how this team wants to win the game. So for example, if you're playing Nasus up in the top lane, your win condition for that team, depending on what the rest of your team is playing, might be split push, especially if you can coordinate with your team. Instead of grouping up mid and basically playing an ARAM like so many games end up devolving into, it's a lot more beneficial to kind of stay in a side lane uh, and just try to continue applying split push pressure and draw the enemy team into making bad decisions by either sending too many people to try and deal with you, or if they send everybody mid, then you get free towers. That sort of thing dictates better how you should be playing to win the game as opposed to the sort of, well, I'm ahead on Nasus, uh, I guess I just come mid. Um, and so that kind of a thing is what you want to be looking at. So if you have a lot of area of effect, CC, and damage, you should probably be playing a team fight composition. That's where you'd want to be grouping up mid. If you have a lot of long range damage sources like Zareth and Caitlyn, you probably want to be playing poke. So instead of just starting a fight, you want to set up and throw skill shots at them before the break of the fight so they're chunked down beforehand. If you have a bunch of enchanters and a hyper carry, obviously that's a protect the carry comp. Everyone should be focusing on just keeping the Kogma or the Kaisa or the Vayne alive life throughout the entire fight. Those kinds of things help dictate what your role on the team should be. So for example, I'm Garen, but if my team is mostly protect the AD carry, for example, if we had an Orianna and an Ivern in this situation, my goal would not necessarily be always, always, always go for the backline. My scenario might actually be body block for the vein, stand in front of the vein. If when they go on the vein, it's my job to hit whomever is hitting vein because I want her to be as safe as possible. And that helps you have a much better chance of success because you're helping to enable your team's play style as opposed to just kind of playing every single game the same exact way. That's not how you win league is by doing the same thing every single game. It doesn't always work, unfortunately. And it helps, so knowing what kind of team you're running tells you how you can maximize those chances of success. Now, it also depends on the enemy team composition, as in the Nasus example earlier. If I'm Nasus, I want to be playing split push, but if the enemy team also has a strong or stronger split pusher than me, if they're running Fiora, for example, well, that's no longer an option because I'm not going to be able to 1v1 the Fiora. She is going to be able to beat me, and that means I need to find a different strategy in order to win the game. And maybe that's I'm going to come, I'm going to basically play an over glorified babysitter for my AD carry. Maybe that means that it's my responsibility to stop the Fiora split push. Maybe that means I need to play Nasus in a different way. But playing Nasus into a split pusher versus playing Nasus into a tank are two completely different subjects, and you need to know how to adjust your playstyle based on that. And this goes for a lot of other champions, not just Nasus. If I'm playing Orianna and I get really fed early, well, maybe I know that I'm the, I'm the carry here and people should be helping me carry because I'm doing most of the damage. And this kind of segues into my next point, 
which is that you should be playing around your winning lanes. If, you're, if your ADC is behind, they're not doing well, but your mid lane is ahead, you should be helping and protecting your mid laner, and vice versa. If your top laner is ahead, and they're playing a champion that is that does well when ahead, someone like Garen, or Kled, or Fiora, then you should be enabling those champions. If Fiora is staying top lane and split pushing, you and the rest of your team should be grouping up and trying to just lightly pressure objectives elsewhere on the map. Give Fiora the time she needs to split push, because in that scenario, the Fiora is going to be remarkably more successful because she's going to draw multiple members or just keep solo killing the enemy top laner. And once she does that, the rest of the team can collapse on the objectives they were only lightly pressuring beforehand, etc, etc. You're enabling Fiora to make the plays because she's the one that's ahead. So, helping losing lanes is beneficial. Obviously, if top lane is 0-2 by 5 minutes in the game, it might be worth it to put some of your resources towards making sure they don't continue to feed. But realistically speaking, the top laner at that point should be saying, I'm really far behind, I need to just stop fighting and just try to get whatever CS I can instead of continuing to go and try to get kills. So, it doesn't make any sense at that point to say... I need to make sure that they get ahead or start get, or get them back even. Instead, it's a lot more, it's better for your time to spend time elsewhere on the map. So if the top laner's behind, but bot lane is even, go snowball the bot lane. Do something with them instead of just trying to get this losing lane back to even, because that's kind of a waste of your time and of your resources. The other thing that you can always do to help win a game is scale late. Being down early really, really sucks, especially nowadays, because people have been saying a lot about Snowball. Whether or not that's true is kind of not really the point of today's video, but it the enemy team has to press that advantage if they get ahead early. They absolutely have to. If they don't, if they're just hanging around and not doing, not pressuring objectives as hard as they could be, that gives you all the time you need. Play passive, just scale up, farm out. And if the enemy team isn't smart enough to pressure their advantage, they give you plenty of time to come back in the game. Almost any game becomes more even after 30 to 40 minutes because by that point, everyone's farmed up. You have you all have mostly full builds. And by that point, the enemy's gold lead doesn't matter. Their experience lead starts dropping off because everyone's just kind of getting XP and farming up. And those are the scenarios that you want to be playing towards if you're behind early because the enemy team will make mistakes, they will try to make risky plays, and if you're able to punish those or just avoid being initiated on, you scale late, you get almost as strong as them, and then it's a question of whether or not you have a better late game team composition or even your late game decision making, which is really important, almost more important than if you have a better late game team composition. Even if you have a six item Kog'Maw, you can still make a mistake of saying, well, Kog'Maw's fine by himself bot lane, so let's all group up by top lane. And then Kog'Maw gets picked, and then you lose the game because respawn timers are too long. So, basically the point I'm making is, always go late, because anything can happen in the late game, regardless of team composition, regardless of how well they did early. So, just play safe if you do fall behind, and that'll give you the best chance to come back into the game. Anyways, I hope this was useful to you guys. Go ahead and let me know what you guys are thinking about any of this down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you really enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days as well. And if you're looking for more Grab the Lantern content, you can check out my blog, link down in the description. I upload an article every single day for your enjoyment. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I will talk to you all later.